Hello friends, welcome to Technoza. This is Rohit Sharma and this is our formula revision number 5 and we are going to start a new series for next subject that is analog electronics and uh, formula revision number 5 is based upon the formulas for semiconductor physics okay that also come in basic electronics one what we are covering in this video is energy band diagram insulators conductors and semiconductors mass section law mobility Einstein relation drift current and diffusion current concentration of charge carrier and the summary of the whole whole video in the last okay so start the video energy band there are three types of energy band first the valence band conduction band and the forward and forbidden energy gap valence band the band occupied by the valence electron or a band having highest occupied band energy is known as valence band conduction band by conducting electrons or the band which have lowest unfilled energy is conduction band forbidden it is a separation between the conduction band and the valence band is also known as a forbidden energy gap remember valence band can never be empty first second when a substance has empty conduction band the current conduction is the current conduction is not possible third in order to push an electron from valence band to conduction band external energy is required which is equal to the forbidden energy gap energy gap okay now this is the conduction band this is the valence band and the difference between is the energy gap which is equal to eg is equal to ec energy of conduction band minus the energy of valence band ev is the highest energy for the electron when it is inside the atom it is a minimum energy to be given externally to make that electron free from atom ec is the lowest and eg is the difference between the amount of energy required to break the covalent bond to reach to reach from conduction band to reach from valence band to conduction band okay and make the electron participate in the current conduction note electron volt is the smallest unit of uh, energy okay so i can write one energy is equal, one unit of energy is equal to one electron volt one electron volt is defined as the amount of energy accepted or released by a single electron when it is moving in the potential direction so I can write one electron volt is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 joule or you can say one electron is equal to have that much charge one electron is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb charge is there also so next is what happens with the increase in temperature what happens to the energy gap energy gap decreases when the there is an increase in temperature here uh, energy gap at temperature degree Kelvin is equal to energy gap at 0 degree Kelvin minus beta t. What is beta? Beta is the V's constant. Uh, it is fixed for uh, germanium. For germanium it is 2.36 into 10 to the power minus 4 and for silicon it is 3.6 into 10 to the power minus 4. Now please remember this table. This is very very important. Energy gap at 0 degree Kelvin. At 0 degree Kelvin for germanium it is 0 0.78 electrovolt. For silicon it is 1.21 and for gallium arsenide. Gallium arsenide is used for making LED. Okay. Gallium arsenide it is 1.656 electrovolts. At 300 degree Kelvin it is 0.724 germanium, 1.125 electrovolt electrovolt for silicon and 1.43 for gallium arsenide. So please remember this table very very important. Can have question based upon this table. Next is what are insulators, semiconductors and conductors. We all know this. Okay, insulators are those which do not conduct current conduct current. The forbidden energy band is very very wide. Okay. Thus, electron cannot jump from valence band to conduction bond. So, resistivity is on the order of 10 to the power 7 ohm meter. In conductor, there is no forbidden band. Okay, they are uh, generally overlap each other. Valence band and conduction band overlap each other. So, total current in conductor is simply due to the flow of electrons. What is semiconductor? Forbidden energy gap very very small. Okay, a semiconductor material is one whose electrical properties lie between the insulator and good conductor. In semiconductor, con conducti conductivities are on the order of 10 to the power 2 mo per meter. So note, in germanium the forward, forbidden band of the order is 0 0.7 and for silicon it is 1.1 that we have already discussed in the table. There are two types of semiconductor. First is pure semiconductor and impure. Impure pure is also known as intrinsic semiconductor and pure is known as extrinsic semiconductor. Extrinsic semiconductor is of two types. First is p-type semiconductor and n-type semiconductor. In dep it depends upon the doping which we are adding in the semiconductor to make it pentavalent p type that is pentavalent uh, p type sorry p type semiconductor and n type in p type we add trivalent impurity in n type we add pentavalent impurity so the intrinsic is an extremely uh, extremely pure form okay this you can uh, read it read it by your own example just see the example trivalent impurity are boron gallium and indium okay for p-type semiconductor 
In p type semiconductor material, the majority carriers are holes. Remember this, and minority are electrons. Now, n type examples will be uh, antimony, phosphorus, and arsenic. And the elect here, the majority carriers are electrons, and the minority are holes. What is a mass action law? Mass action is will uh, is equal to n p is equal to n i square, where n is the number of electrons, p is the number of holes. Okay, in valence band, and uh, n i is the intrinsic concentration at given temperature. Remember, okay, this is known as mass action law. Now, for intrinsic concentration, uh, can also be written as n i square is equal to a naught t q. E to the power minus E G naught is the E G is the energy gap divided by K T. K is the Boltzmann constant. Remember, A naught is a constant. Intrinsic concentration depends upon temperature. As temperature increases, the intrinsic concentration increases by T to the power three by two. What is mobility? We all we always know that drift velocity is equal to the product of mobility into the electric field. Okay, so I can write mobility is equal to the drift velocity upon the electric field. So it is drift velocity per unit electric field. It defines how fast the charge travels from one place to another. Okay, so this is all about mobility. Electron's mobility is always greater than the hole mobility. We we already know this. Hence, electrons can travel faster, so contribute more current for same electric field than holes as compared by the quantum mechanic mechanical physics. Now next is. The mobility mobility is directly proportional to the t to the power minus m. Okay, m is constant. One point six is for electron, and two point five for electron, uh, and one point six is for electron, and two point three three for hole for germanium. Like this. Just you no need to remember these. Okay, just you remember this relation. Okay, uh, in between zero, in between ten to the power to ten to the power four, mu is directly proportional to one upon root e. And in between 10 to the power 4 and 10 to the power 6, mu is inversely proportional to e. Remember this relation, okay? Remember this graph, important graph, okay? Very very important. I have already given this graph while I was teaching basic electronic in our course, okay? So if you those student who have not purchased the course till now and you want to prepare very well for your exam, then go to Mechanical Adda app and purchase the Isro Three Crash Course in which I have. In which I have covered each and every basic questions, basic concepts related to the ISRO Technical Assistant Exam for every center. Okay, so note at small at small electrical field mobility is constant. Remember that means here at small at zero to ten cube mobility here is constant. Okay, so at very high electric field product of mobility and electric field becomes constant and is equal to the saturation ratio of ratio of drift velocity. Now, what is the mobility for germanium, silicon, and arsenide, uh, gallium arsenide? Mu n, okay, mobility of electron that is 3800 for germanium, 1300 for silicon, and 4600 for gallium arsenide. Mobility of holes 1800 for germanium, silicon for uh, 500, 300 for gallium arsenide. I have given question based upon this in test three also. Okay, so this table is also very very important. So Please, those students are who are seriously preparing for exam. The the star point that I mark in my courses as well as in this formula video formula series video. Please, please write it in your notes correctly, okay, and learn it by heart, okay. So next is drift current. Now we all know that uh, drift current I D is defined as the charge flowing per second across any normal plane. So I D is equal to n A Q V D. V D is the drift velocity. V D is equal to mu e. We all know that it is the product of mobility and electric field. So drift current density is equal to current drift current density is defined by the current upon area. So this will be equal to n q mu e. J current density is given by n q mu e. From here, conduct we know that J is equal to sigma e. Okay, this is the uh, this is according to Ohm's law. I have already told you this is the first form of Ohm's law. Uh, here only V is directly proportional to I is derived. Okay, so sigma is equal to Sigma is equal to n q mu. Okay, so I can write n q mu n plus n q mu p. Okay, like this. Sigma for intrinsic we know that n is equal to p is equal to n i. Okay, so total sigma the total conductivity will will be equal to n i concentration q bracket mu n plus mu p. Mu n is the mobility of electron plus mobility of holes. 
same for the conductivity of n type and conductivity of the p type you can discuss it last what do you need to remember conductivity of pure semiconductor increases with temperature first conductivity of pure semiconductor at 0 degree kelvin is zero important points remember this please write it in your notes conductivity of extrinsic semiconductor decreases with increase in temperature for extrinsic semiconductor initial increase when temperature rises from 0 degree kelvin Conductivity increase will increase in doping temperature. Conductivity of extrinsic semiconductor at 0 degree Kelvin is 0. At Curie temperature, conductivity become equal to intrinsic semiconductivity. Semiconductivity. Okay. Next, concentration of charge carriers. I don't think so. You will have question based upon this. Okay. This is somewhat about BTEC level questions. Okay. So I am not discussing this with you right now. Okay. For all diploma based exam, the the last slide, still the last slide that is important. But I am attaching this in this video, so you can just study. This, this is to con, uh, this is to calculate the number of electrons in the conduction band, and not which is equal to N C e to the power minus E C minus E F divided by K T. Okay, E C is the we all know the energy level at lowest that is the conduction band. E F is the Fermi energy level. K is the Boltzmann constant, and T is the temperature. Same for number of holes in the balance band. Okay, so Fermi level. What is Fermi level? Fermi level is given by 1 upon 1 plus e e to the power e minus e f by k t. E f is the energy of Fermi level in electro volt. Okay. Fermi level is the energy state having probability 1 by 2 of being occupied of an electron if there is no forbidden band exist. Okay. Not important for your exam, but I have given this. This is the Fermi level for intrinsic semiconductor. Okay. And this is for n type semiconductor. You can study this. And this is for p type semiconductor. Okay, you so you can study it by your own. Not very, not that much important for your exam. Uh, I don't think so. Any question will come out based upon this. Okay, so diffusion current. What is diffusion current? Diffusion current can density is given by Q dn dn into dn by dx and uh, JP. The current density for holes is given by minus Q dp uh, dp by dx. Okay, now what is this stands for? dn is the electronic electron diffusion coefficient dp is the hole diffusion coefficient dn by dx is the electron concentration gradient and dp by dx is the hole concentration gradient i have given one question based upon this in the uh, test series and also in our course also so you can check this is not important okay for your uh, exam but how to calculate the length of diffusion l is equal to root of d tau Diffusion L is the diffusion length, D is the diffusion constant of charge carrier, tau is the carrier lifetime. Lifetime. So D diffusion length, D is equal to diffusion constant is given by mu into Vt. Vt is the thermal voltage which is given by Kt by Q. Kt by Q. Vt is generally 26 millivolt at room temperature. Okay. It is uh, it is remain it remains constant everywhere. For electron, the diffusion length is D and D tau and and for hole it is dp tau p. Remember diffusion length depends upon diffusion constant, carrier lifetime, temperature, mobility of charge carriers. Okay. Einstein relation is very very important. dn upon mu n is equal to dp upon mu p into vt. I have already told you diffusion constant is equal to mu n mu into vt. vt is the thermal constant, mu is the mobility. For uh, electron, for electron dn is equal to mu n into vt. And for hole, DN, dp is equal to mu p into vt. vt is equal to kt by q t upon 11,600. And for 300 degree, it is its value is constant that is 26 millivolt. Last, the summary of hole that we have studied. Highly doped semiconductor exhibits metallic property. For intrinsic semiconductor, please remember this is very, very important. This thing is very, very important. For intrinsic semiconductor, carrier concentration directly proportional directly proportion to temperature. Conductivity is directly proportional to uh, temperature to power 3 by 2. Conductivity is directly proportional to doping. If we increase the doping, conductivity will also increase. For extrinsic, majority carrier concentration is directly proportional to doping. Minority is directly inversely proportional to doping. Minority is inversely proportional to temperature. And minority to carrier concentration is almost independent of temperature. Please remember these two points. Very, very important. Very, very important. Okay. Okay. So this is or this is all about the formula series for the semiconductor physics. Okay. Now in the next lecture, that is tomorrow, we will do another another chapter 
for analog leg coins the formula series based on analog leg coins that is formula series number 6 and also there is one good news i am going to start uh, the previous year papers from tomorrow or from day uh, from day after tomorrow at my youtube channel okay so please subscribe to the channel and if you like the video please like it and share it with your friends as soon as possible okay so okay guys take care all the very best we will meet in our further videos